welcome to Sports Connection. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. Here with my co-host as always, Mr. Tate Matthews. Tate, last week we were back to region play in football and then we had the golf district tournament which you and I had the pleasure of going out to the bridge there, Franklin Bridge, and watching a little action. Obviously a sport where we do a pretty good job competing. I'd say we're pretty good at golf. We got a pretty good chance to do well in the postseason tournaments, and it was it was fun. Got there, uh, got to. We started off on the green at 18, where they got to go. What would you call that? A uh, that's a shot over the pond. I'd call it a pond. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. pond, and uh, really impressive how close to the pin a lot of them got. You know, so it was very fun to watch that. Then we went out and did a little, got to watch some action on the other holes as well. Um, Saw Charles Pulliam out. Mr. Pulliam and I, Coach Craig, and and you were our ride. We somehow we got left in between 14 and 15. But <laughs> Coach Ladd, Coach Coach Ladd, Chris Ladd, he is the golf coach at Nolansville now. So uh, he gave us a ride back. Thanks, Coach Ladd. Appreciate it. Well, and Coach Craig, obviously that cart, he's he's very well respected. He had just a primo cart that we were riding around on at the event. So that was nice. Well, and correct, it was a primo cart, and, but it was made for two. And so with uh, Coach uh, Pulliam and I on the back, that was about 400-plus <laughs> added pounds. So don't know that the cart was made for that. <laughs> hey, freshman, i got to mention my man, freshman, Finn Carto. Ravenwood, Ravenwood High School, right. Got to watch him play, just a freshman. Uh, man, you're going to be hearing from him a lot. In the, we got a lot of great golfers, but – He's one that I got to watch um, on more than one hole and was very proud of the effort that he put in and just a freshman, man. So that's a name. Remember that name. You're going to be hearing it more in golf. And he had quite the following, too. Had people with signs waiting by the green. and Very impressive. Yes. Very impressive. Looking forward to talking about him in the days and years to come for sure. Cool. Let's talk about some of those results uh, in the girls' side. Now here, so here's what happens for our audience maybe that doesn't know what happens with the golf tournament. All the players from the top three teams advance to the region. Now this week the region will be held at, uh, at Two Rivers. They're in Nashville. Now Then it'll be just the top team moving on. So you have to win the region to move on. This past week you had to be in the top three and then if your team wasn't in the top three, the top five individuals move on. So uh, again, low score wins. And girls, third place, Franklin 165. Second place, Page, 163. And in first place, 18 strokes better than second, Ravenwood. I don't think I'm going out on a limb to say my prediction is Coach Craig and the Ravenwood Raptor girls team. They'll be moving on after uh, the tournament this week. Hannah Walton, a 71. Emily Nelson, a 74. Holly Hake, a 78. Top two scores count, Tate. 18 strokes. 18 strokes. That's one a hole. That is the equivalent of a running clock in football. <laughs> yes. Hey, we might be close. Maybe we'll get this ready next week. It might be our first boat captain right. hat. For well, it would have been this week, but we don't do Wilco on Wilco. <laughs> that's, crime, true. So. that's true. That's true. <laughs> Thanks so for reminding me. Next week, we'll be able to do it. <laughs> hey, I got a question. Uh, Paige, second place, did that surprise you? No, they've been playing pretty well. Yeah. At boys' team as well. In fact, their boys were right out of out of a fourth place, or excuse me, out of third place on the boys' side. So now they've, that's a team that's continuing to improve. Sophia DiPaolo, no surprise here, from Franklin High School. She wins the girls' individual title with a three under 68. Uh, the two young ladies from Ravenwood that we mentioned, they finished second and third. Other qualifiers, Isabella McCutcheon of Centennial, Piper Davis Independence, Brooke, Brooke Brummett Brentwood, Miss Three Sport Athlete herself, Claudette Runk of Summit, Chloe Denham of Nolensville. Now, the boys' side, it's a toss-up this week, right? If you look at the top three, only separated by four strokes. Third place, Ravenwood, 289. Second place, Brentwood, 286. First place, Franklin, 285. One stroke better than Rave, or Brentwood. And can you imagine if that was the region where only one of those teams advances and it's only a one-stroke difference between first and second? Will Penson and Harrison Akers, both with 68s for Franklin. Eli Cleveland, 72. Cooper Wilcox, 77. Listen, it's and i got to go with it since I committed early in the year. Right now, it's looking like my prediction with Franklin. I said that early that, hey. Oh, you they, called them both. They've got the shot, but, again, anything can happen this week. 
yeah, one stroke, that's, that's, um, that could all change really, really quick. But it was, it was fun to watch those guys as well. We got to see them on the 18th and it just, you know, all, all, all the athletes in, in, in Wilco amaze me, but especially, you know, in, in golf, you got freshmen out there doing things that are just, I mean, it's, it's amazing to me. I, you know, I mean, those scores are very impressive. And it's just you. And yeah. it's not like you can say, well, time out, let me get a sub, or it's lonely out there. Yeah, that's right. And there is no halftime, or I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, and, and, and you mentioned that for those also that hadn't been there, you mentioned uh, Sophia. Uh, that's the other thing I love about going and, and, and watching those kind of events, too. If you don't think golf is an intense sport, uh, she walked up for her to the putting green on 18 and uh, she was talking to Coach Whipple and was in a very good mood. Now, 18th, y'all do it different. That wasn't the last hole, right? Right, but, right. And she was, let's just say she wasn't pleased with the way she putted on 18. <laughs> and when she came off the green, the demeanor was different. And, I mean, it was laser focus. She was hot. It was intense, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of Loved fun. Loved it. On the boys' side, Michael Hake of Ravenwood goes seven under 64 to, to get the individual title. Uh, four players with the 68, and I'm not sure what the tiebreaker was. They went to the scorecard, I'm sure, like the toughest hole maybe. Uh, Pinson of Franklin was second. Troop Wallace of Brentwood third. Other qualifiers, Whit Conrad, Independence, Luke Beatles, Nowensville, Paige, Tyler Wilson, and one of the all-time great WCS names. We've had some great ones, Chubbs Wilds. What a great name. Way to go, Chubbs. <laughs> Keep up the good work, brother. Hey, let's talk a little volleyball, Tate. Were you a little surprised at that Ravenwood Nolansville outcome? Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, uh, Ravenwood's, <laughs> you know, we're not talking about Tennessee Tech going into Neyland and <laughs> giving a wings up and getting a win. I'm not that surprised, but yeah, I was. Uh, but I think that uh, that raised some eyebrows right there. Ravenwood said, "Hey, not so fast." They they did their own version of they not did. so fast, my friend. Big win. Four sets uh, that Ravenwood wins three to one, and it avenged an earlier four set loss they had to Nowensville. So now both teams are sitting three and two in district play, and I assure you, the happiest team with that result was Brentwood. No doubt. They're undefeated. They're not going to be caught now. Right. Uh, they're really not. And they, they might not have been anyway, but certainly with, with, uh, that no losses. Up number one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they'd had to lose twice, and I just don't see it happening. You know, the thing that surprised me was the quick start, 25 to 8 in the first set. Ravenwood wins the first two sets. Nolensville comes back, but then uh, uh, Ravenwood shuts them out, or not shuts them out, but they 25 13. That's, that's pretty dominant first and fourth yeah. set by Ravenwood. Well, especially for a team that is a two time state defending state champion and, and one that, you know, a lot of people thought maybe had the chance to come out number one in this district, which they still got the tournament. So, yes, um, everything about it. The, the, the surprise wasn't so much in the win, but the, the, the fashion that they won. You know, I'm just wondering, too, because no one's been so dominant. And then they lose to Brentwood, they lose to Ravenwood. Maybe it's hurt their confidence a little bit because their district losses. But now they can maybe get that out of the way. Coach yeah. Young can address it and say, hey, got to keep playing got to keep doing our thing. Last year, if they lose to these teams, didn't really matter. Right. It wasn't in the district. Right. It was, uh, hey, that'll make us better. But I don't think it does, man. One, because they've been in big games. They're used to winning. Um, they believe in winning. Plus, in volleyball with the club season, man, they all, all these young True. ladies are together anyways. I don't think it hurts their confidence at all. Ravenwood in that particular matchup. Reagan Larkin, 17 kills. Tanya Sickling, 13 Reagan Grimes, 12. Kennedy Riggs, I had to do a double take on this, 52 <laughs> assists. That's strong. That's very strong. Brent Wood uh, at the facility formerly known as A-Game. <laughs> they get a big tournament win this past weekend. They also had a district win over Franklin. And look out, they're hosting Ravenwood for the second time, a little volleyball battle of the woods. And let me tell That's you something. That's this week. In case you're wondering, is the battle of the wood intense in, in volleyball like it is in football? Very. Very. You know, it was one of the first events, I've said this before, that I went to that was kind of a rivalry type of event in this position. 
Ravenwood Brent one, and I was I had to do a double take. I'm like, man, this is yes, this is something. <laughs> the crowds were there. Yeah. I mean, it was great. It really was. In fact, the crowds were crowds that I think some districts and schools would appreciate for a basketball game. No doubt. I mean, it was great. And and man, there's nothing. Seriously, it's it's up there with anything. An intense, well played volleyball game in that gym with great crowds and loud. It's a great. It's as fun of an event to go to as anything. Hey, let's talk soccer. Listen, that region, it's always this way. When you're talking Franklin, Brentwood, Ravenwood, Nolansville, I mean, it's going to be unbelievable when you're talking about who the representatives are going to be in the state tournament. Franklin, Ravenwood, a rematch of last year's state championship, a 0-0 tie. We hate the ties, right? No overtime, no penalty kicks. Only nine shots on goal for the night. The best chance was from Franklin's Emma Shields, who hit the crossbar, uh, but another tie. Yeah. Ravenwood plays Brentwood this week. Nolansville gets a dominant win over Summit, 4-0. Uh, Nolansville freshman Madeline Padelski with the hat trick. That's three. Three goals. She was also the Gateway Tire Athlete she, of the Week. She was. I'm glad you mentioned that. And Madison Zopa with the shutout. Brentwood beat Centennial 1-0 uh, also last week. So... Soccer right now, and again, early on, I said, Franklin, I'm not giving it the Franklin Homer deal. Just based on last year, they had so many starters back, but I'm telling you, it's going to be tight. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, there's some, look at all those zeros. There's Incredible. some great goalkeeping going on. I'll go ahead and say it. Just because I think it's that good, and that's what happens when, when people are, are evenly matched. One of those two goes home early. Yeah, I, I agree with you which is going to be tough. Oh. It, it was Brentwood last year. It was looking like it was trending towards Ravenwood, Brentwood, and then Franklin there at the end slips in, and then we kind of forget about Brentwood. Right. And they had this great season. So somebody's going to be left out, and it's going to be too bad. Yes. But the good news is this, as we know, if you survive that, just like in golf, you know, some of the golf coaches talk about, man, if we took the best teams, we would have three or four of our teams in the state tournament, and I respond with, Yes, and if we took the best teams in basketball, Memphis would have about six in the state <laughs> tournament. So, so let's, you know, let's, 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 let's pump the brakes on that one. But I get it. I do get it. But the good news is if you win the league, you've got a, you're on track to win the state tournament. Yes, you're on. you got a good chance of. You, you like know. that Memphis analogy. Yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> we might not ever get back. <laughs> let's take what we can get, Wilco. That's let's right. take what we can get. Right. Hey, let's talk a little cross-country tape. The Southern Showcase, and we, I think we've talked about this before, but so many events in Alabama. Like, our teams are always traveling to Alabama. I know. Easy trip. I guess. A little I mean, mountainous, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, actually, now that you're mentioning that, I do think that probably prepares us for later in the year because it is. Yeah. Some of those courses are pretty tough, so to speak, which might make the postseason seem a little bit easier. So, yeah, that's, that's a good call. Thank you. That's a good call. Hey, different divisions and levels that they were competing in. In the championship division, which was the division, the Brentwood girls finished first. The boys from Brentwood finished fourth. And then once again, four runners in the top 14 in that event. Peyton Strauss, Strauss 10th. Lydia Cromwell, 11th. Rachel Halls, 12th. Brooke Teal, 11th. Or excuse me, 14th. So 10, 11, 12, 14. It's just incredible what they're doing. Again, Barring something strange happening, they're looking at another state championship. Oh, yeah. Another banner. <laughs> they've, run out, they've run out of room years ago, but I don't know where they're going to put it 68 now. 68 team state championships going into this year for Brentwood. Hey, what about in game day when you brought that up and Hester said that Barbara Campbell was, uh, <laughs> you took she her. was 28 of them or something like that. <laughs> did, he, did he say that or did, was that a qual statement? I thought it was – who was, It may have been Hester. I think it was Hester. I don't think Qualls would have said that. But Actually, he's like, yeah, but if you take Barbara Cameron out. <laughs> Good point. But they, that's only 15 now. They right. still have 53. He exaggerated a little bit. Of course. Uh, on the boys' side, Miles Raymer from Ravenwood finished 20th. Callahan Fielder, the superstar freshman there from Brentwood. Got a lot of superstar freshmen. Yes. Finished 35th. And then in another division, his division, Nate Martinez of Indy finishes third. So – Great event for our teams. Uh, glad we could be a part of it. Now, let's talk a little football, and let's start with the location of game day this past weekend, the Battle of the Wood. 
Uh, game day was there. The Titans had a big role there. We appreciate Surf Melendez, Executive Creative Director, who's working with Dr. Qualls and the students at the EIC and the OTL students. They were there. DJ Pryor, he's a comedian who's doing some work uh, with the Titans. And listen, uh, Dr. Qualls was trying to elbow his way in. I think he was getting a little <laughs> jealous or nervous that DJ was the hype man, and he wasn't. Well, and let's be honest, Dr. Qualls is, is a great hype it's man. A great it's, hype man. It's not like we were lacking in that <laughs> department. But yeah, he infringed on his turf a little bit, and then there was a little bit of a turf war, but, you know, then he got distracted and came back over. So. Well, remember early in the game, uh, of course, they were both pumping up the crowd, talking at the same time with the Brentwood students, and then DJ Pryor's going to go to the Ravenwood side, and we're like, all right, you and I are talking. All right, let's get our, let's get our stuff together. They're like, where's Dr. Qualls? <laughs> He's over on the Ravenwood side with DJ pumping up the crowd. We almost had to start the show without him. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> it was great. Tate, and you had something to do with this, obviously. Talk to me about those Brentwood throwback jerseys. It was incredible. It was pretty cool, and I don't know if you noticed, but earlier in the day, Coach Finch did a little foreshadowing and he sent out a tweet. Of Troy Aikman, that's Troy right. Troy Aikman okay. in the UCLA. But, but back in 82, the original uh, uniforms were baby blue and gold uh, for Brentwood High School. And so they went throwback. It was something that I believe Mr. Kydell is really the one who really wanted to do it. But Coach Crawford's talked about it for years. He never could quite get himself to do it. And uh, I haven't even t I didn't. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell you. No, no you yet. didn't. And... Um, Anyways, so we, we, we talked about it, and so we made up a sample for Coach Crawford. Well, obviously he left, and then we showed it to um, Coach Finch, and he said, yeah, we're going to do this, man. So I think Coach Evans was pushing him there to go there too, wasn't he? All the coaches were. <laughs> Coach Evans, Coach Norfleet, Peck, they, all, they were all on board. I tried to show it to Coach Finch without them in there because I knew <laughs> I didn't want to put it, you know, I didn't want to hotbox him, right? And so, uh, anyways, so, yeah, we're going to do it, and nobody knew about it. Uh, uh, Don Chapman, our man, Mr. Reliable, he got them over to him. They hit him, and then when they went out for warm-up, uh, a few of the board members and their wives came, or maybe they were the board members, uh, came in, and they put them in the kids' lockers. Incredible. And when they came back in, Coach Finch said they were just over the moon. The problem with that is, now you know, because when you did the throwbacks at Franklin, they're not going to want to wear the other ones at home right. anymore. <laughs> right. So I, I don't blame them. <laughs> they look great. Yeah. Man, they look great. Hey, with that win, and Dr. Vaden brought her A game for, for, for the picks, her she and Mr. Kydell, because she brought this up about winning streaks. We won three in a row in the regular season. They have. We're going to start our own streak. That win broke the three-game regular season winning streak from Brentwood, and it cut that series lead. It's now 12 to 11. What a great rivalry. I know our man That's Tom, what a rivalry. That's a oh, rivalry. Great. <laughs> you know, and our man Tom Crager was talking about, I saw, and he gave us a couple great shout-outs there uh, on social media, but talking about, you know, this may be the one. It is. When it comes to rivalries and the, and the hype and the game day and all the stuff we had going on, it's pretty special. Brentwood hung in there, obviously. Ravenwood was up 14-7 at the half. Uh, uh, Chris Parson, as he does so many times, comes up with a big play. Uh, to put Ravenwood up 21-10. What's Brentwood do? They respond. Davis White to Aaron Walton, but they couldn't get any closer after that. They go for two, so hopefully they get the ball back. A field goal would tie it. They didn't get it, and it ended 21-16. In fact, it ended with Ravenwood with the ball inside the five-yard line. So great game. What a great atmosphere. Well, that's what I was going to say. The, the, the great thing about it, you talked about the environment and everything that goes with it, and it's second to none, but then – it's always a great ball game. Always. So uh, that's what you want, right? So, a, a, you know, we, we talked about it. Brentwood's record's fool's gold. I mean, they're a good football team. I was looking at, I was looking at their uh, schedule the rest of the season. Don't be surprised if they go six and four. They're at least going to go five and five. But um, I agree. You know, Coach Hester knew it. He knew this was going to be a tough game. And so they, they were happy to get out of there with a win. Brentwood just, you know, that, that, that first one, that's really the only one that you can – you take that one back, it looks a little bit different. But they're getting better, and they proved that on Friday night. They had a chance to win that football game and to, buy, to a team that a lot of people think are going to go to Chattanooga. You forgot about that, didn't you? That's right. <laughs> we'll be there. That's right. Have to have a new place to go hang out before the game, though. I got it. 
Taco Max. Taco, I'm ready. Oh, I've been there. It's good. It's good. It's very good. Carter Pace with a big game for Ravenwood, 13 carries, 87 yards. Katura Chapman, 11 for 81. Brent Wood, some familiar names having great games. Davis White, Scotty Collins, 26 carries, 105 yards. Aaron Walton, 73 yards. Centennial at Summit, the WCTV game of the week. Uh, and by the way, Tate, I like this week's gym. It's, it's, I, had to, I had to dig for a little research here. I mentioned it last week, but I think it's impressive. The last two weeks in the second quarter, yeah. Summit has scored 63 points. They get 35 against Blazing Fast last week. They get 28 against Centennial this week. 63 points in the second quarter? 63 points. Yep. Uh, 28 in a quarter is amazing. But I, and I think we – or I missed that last week. 35 in a quarter? That's, that's crazy. That's insane. They're on fire, man. They are. They are playing at a high, high level offensively. They really are, and obviously this will be no surprise, but you talk about Summit having a great game. You have to talk about Destin Wade. And speaking of Destin, let's take a look at this week's WCTV Play of the Week. And so here we go, Wade in the shotgun. We got three receivers to the right. That may be a decoy, but no, he's going to drop back to pass. Pressure up the middle again. He's going to take off. A little bit more pressure this time. Still dancing. He's at the 10. Makes a move to the oh right. My. And that's going to be a touchdown. Well, we're going to see it right here. In fact, I don't know if you can check it out, but uh, Pierce right here was wide open for a minute. One tackle. Well, and if we follow Pierce, two, yeah. he's going to actually he's, come back into yep. the play here. And this is what makes it so special that he cuts back inside. And he's just kind of staring down defenders like, okay, what do you want me to do? And so here you have Pierce coming back yep. into the play. Free him up just a hair. Well, that's the way. Let me tell you something. Unless you do something special, more special than that, that may be our WCTV play of the week. Well, great job by DC and PB on the call. They never disappoint. But, uh, I mean, Mr. Wade, it's amazing. We talked about this on game day. Uh, you know, you, you see yards per carry, and when you see 11.5 or 15.5, you, you know that that's a little – that means there were some long runs broken. Nobody averages that much unless you're Destin Wade. <laughs> Every run is 28. It's incredible. 35. Uh, you know, the guy's just playing on another level. Um, and as funny as it sounds, they, they talked about how he even took another step passing the ball Friday night. But, you know, not to not make this about Destin, but, you know, you had to have those other guys on there. And then I, uh, the thing that I love the most, our man at the very end, <laughs> who's all the way down the field making the last block on the four-yard line to make sure he goes in untouched, our man Brady Pierce. It, it's unbelievable. They are a team. They love each other. They're going to be tough to beat. They are. Uh, obviously, we talk about Destin and Keaton Wade and Brady Pierce, but a guy that's helping them go to next level is Dominic Hollis. Dominic Hollis. Uh, seven, or excuse me, seven carries. Oh, seven. Right. Seven. 127 yards. That's and like 18 a carry. It's incredible. And keep this in perspective, Centennial only had 110 total. Yeah. So we're talking about Dominic Hollis, who's not a name we've mentioned a ton, but we're going we're gonna to be mentioning him on down the road for sure. He has 17 more yards in Centennial. Incredible night for him, too. Yeah, and, and that gets lost, too, with the, with the offensive uh, output that they're putting on. The, the Spartan defense and first-year uh, coordinator, Kirk Taylor, uh, what a great job he is doing as the – you know, he's been on staff. But, you know, Coach Melton's the been the guy, and, and, and he comes in, and not only are they did they not drop off any, they're, they're maybe playing the best defense they've played since Coach Coleman's there. So it's impressive. Fun to watch if you're a Spartan fan. Battle of Franklin 3.0, I guess. We have lots of battles of Franklin. Not, I mean, it's not the Franklin Centennial, but right. Franklin address. Franklin 7, Independence 38. It was homecoming for Independence. Uh, nobody's really talking about Andy. They're 2-0 in region play. Again, some of the same names. Joseph Cummings, 277 yards, three touchdowns uh, at quarterback. Jack Rummel, who's becoming the go-to guy. And obviously, they're, they're covering Katina. They're covering Lockwood. Uh, but Rummel's doing a great job. Six receptions, 187 yards, three touchdowns. Trey Hartwell, you've been talking about him forever. And another great Wilco name, 
Brooke, don't call me Al Sapone. <laughs> with, an, awesome. with an interception. <laughs> it was great. I'm telling you now, they are they're playing well. Yeah. In, Indy Brentwood, I think, is going to be a great matchup. Indy's probably played the toughest schedule of anybody. Okay. Agreed. Two things two things jump out to me. Uh, you were talking about We've got Lockwood. We've got Katina. The Rumble, this six for 187 yards, three touchdowns. I went back and watched the highlights on those. What's impressive with those, those were those t- – <laughs> you heard Coach Dr. Qualls bring it up in game day. He loves to talk about the timing routes. <laughs> That's what those were. He didn't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> right, he heard it because Black. It's regurgitated. <laughs> but he – that's what those were. Those were, you know, one step, boom, hit on the run. Yeah. And for whatever reason, Rummel and Cummings have the best – uh, connection going right now, and those were, you know, five-yard pass plays that turned into long runs. That is tough to beat when it, Coach Blade talks about it. When it's on, when they got it on point, it's a thing of beauty. And then Trey Hartwell, we've been waiting to see it. 169 rushing yards. When that running game's going like that with that passing game, throw that record out. They're going to be tough to beat. Look out, Franklin. I know it's hard to see this with the score, but they're getting a, better. They're getting better. They had a good start to the game. They had an eight-minute drive to cut the lead to 14-7 in the second quarter. Bryce Sparks is back, playing well for Franklin, 23 carries, 107 yards. Ashton Orton, nine carries, 43 yards, and a touchdown. Fairview, no surprise. No surprise. And, and actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to announce we've got a very special guest to talk about the Fairview game today. Bring him on in here. Coach Hughes, good to see you, man. Thanks for having me, Coach Joins. Uh, big win for the Yellow Jackets the other night. Snappy's Pizza was packed. <laughs> the line was wrapped around the door. Yellow Jackets. We looked like the green machine. Mean green out there. We were scoring at will. <laughs> big great, big game for Kennedy Pendergrass. 14 for 22. 297 yards. Hey, Coach, there's been people saying, forget the passing game this year. It's all about running. Well, hold on a second. Kennedy had a great game. That's right, and Kennedy in his first year as the starting quarterback. We tried to tell you, a dual-sport athlete and a guy who's just going to keep getting better as they go. But, uh, hey, we're going to throw the ball now. We, we, we're going to run it too, but no surprise there. My man Morgan Jean had a big game, and, you know, we just uh, – the Yellow Jackets, we, we, we're going to score some points now. And, uh, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure that we got in there and got that running clock. You know, Cheatham County, we don't – the only good thing that ever came out of Cheatham County was Stratton's, and it's closed now. So, <laughs> we're just glad to get to win and get back to Fairview and uh, really proud of the boys. Well, congratulations, Coach, on the 41-6 win. Obviously, uh, uh, Crawford Claxton a couple of touchdowns, Dylan Sullivan with a touchdown, and Layden Grant with another great game. Six carries, 84 yards, and a touchdown. Really proud of the development of Layden. He's given us another weapon and a really a, a tough physical running game, you know, <laughs> that uh, he's added another layer. So, hey, sleep on the Yellow Jackets, if you will. We'll, we'll see you come November. Coach, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. I got a, the boats filled <laughs> up out there at the marina. I got to go get it. <laughs> Page 32. Franklin County, 15. Page, still undefeated, 5-0, 2-0 in league play, and uh, Mr. McNamara did okay, Tate. Speaking of the Mike Bobo watch list quarterback, <laughs> in the last two weeks, Jake McNamara, five touchdowns last week, uh, uh, two weeks ago, Friday night, 17 for 25, 247 yards, four touchdowns. That's, for those keeping count, that's nine in the last two weeks. Incredible. He's on fire. Boy Smith, four receptions, 78 yards, and a touchdown. And then our man, Ethan Cunningham, he had a nice dual uh, role game, 13 carries, 85 yards, and then he came in with three receptions and 68 yards for a touchdown. But here's the stat of the night. It's not McNamara. Who's our uh, Butkus? I guess on the Butkus Watch List Award, <laughs> our man Isaac Haymeyer, 15 tackles, three tackles for a loss. You get 15 tackles, you're pretty dang active. You've either had a great night or somebody's like uh, – not telling the truth on the stats. Isaac had a great night. That's 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 happened before, but not on Coach Rathbone. No, no doubt. Oh, and by the way, Coach Rathbone, Mr. Calm, right? Five and zero, baby. Five and zero. Again, I think they're quietly one of our best teams that we don't talk about a lot. But listen, that Columbia game, the Nolensville game, those are going to be some great games in the region. Nolensville, unfortunately, and this is one that surprised us. Columbia Central is obviously a little bit better team than maybe we thought they were. Uh, 30-7, it's Nolensville's first region loss of the year. They're now 1-1. One one. 
Another big night for Kobe Walton, 16 for 30, 195 yards, a touchdown to Chance Fitzgerald. Dylan Northcutt, five receptions for 60 yards. Nolensville only 13 points in the last two games. I, I look for them to right the ship, though. I really do. They'll right the ship, but the bottom line is this. they got to fix the line of scrimmage. They're getting beat on both sides, having a hard time stopping the run, and then they're not, you know, uh, they're not protecting in the – protecting the pass game the way should and establishing the run game. So they got a lot of weapons. They'll get it fixed. Coach Derek and his staff, they know what they're doing. But, uh, yeah, that, was, that one was a – that left a sour taste in their mouth. And that was the only game that you, Dr. Qualls, the fans, and I missed last <laughs> week. We were all 5-1 and one last week. So in our pick and remember, fans, keep voting. WCSCO Athletics on Twitter. The fans have 23 wins. I have 24 wins. Dr. Qualls has 25 wins with the help of probably a pundit out there. The pundit. And you have 26 wins. Not so. a pundit, the pundit. The pu hey, listen, I think there's going to be separation this week. I think so, too. In fact, let's jump right in. I've strategically planned when we're picking because I want to maybe have a response so we can do something okay. a little different. We're going to start with Brentwood versus Hillsboro. Brentwood 1-4. Hillsboro 0-5, but let me tell you, the difference between those two teams is a lot. Brentwood blows out Hillsboro at home. Two and four, and it'll be the first time that Coach Finch has been the captain of the boat because this is a boat race. As an AP teacher, and I feel like he'd be driving a yacht. I wish, <laughs> I wish we had it taped from the uh, Brentwood Rotary Club. By the way, thank you for having us. The answer he gave when he started kicking knowledge about World War I, I mean, I told you, that's a smart dude, man. Dr. Vaden loved it, too. Dr. She, Vaden loved it. She kind of perked up. Yeah. She said something about trying to hire him back or something. <laughs> it was great. Uh, so we're both going Brentwood. Centennial, Dixon County, what say you, Mr. Matthews? I'm going with the Cougars. My man Josh Forsey will have another big night. And uh, I'm going to say there's even a chance for a running clock here. Cougars get their fourth win of the year. You know, it's interesting. I agree. The Centennial Cougars. Centennial wins in all six games. They hadn't played one close game either way. That's right. So. It's feast or famine. <laughs> this week it's feast. Uh, game three, I'll pick this one first. Fairview at White House Heritage. Now, the folks at Fairview say this is one of their tougher opponents in the region, the new region they have. I, I agree with them, but I've, you take a look at the schedules and who they've played, I think that. Fares well for Fairview. Fairview comes out on top. Well, you're right. White House Heritage is good. This is one of the tougher games on their schedule, at least in the region. But you, you're familiar with that area of the state very well from your times. In Robertson, or, or, uh, Robertson slash Sumner County. It's That's like right. right on the line there. So we all know that the post-game uh, meeting spot for Fairview is, is uh, Snappy's Pizza. Well, just one exit past the White House Heritage um, exit is a gas station fireworks store called Sad Sam's. And that is really, I think, kind of fitting because that's where the White House Heritage <laughs> postgame party is going to be is at Sad Sam's because Fairview is going to go up there and drop an L on them. Uh, so Have you been to Sad Sam's? I've seen Sad Sam's. I'm not a big fireworks <laughs> guy, but, but I agree. That's where they'll be hanging out. Yeah, it's over. Franklin McGavick. Now, if you look at Franklin's schedule, obviously they have five games left. There's two or three, I think, winnable games in there, or at least a chance for them to be competitive. None more so than this one. McGavick's three and two, but I, I think that record's it's a little little misleading. Fool's goal. Am I first? You're first. Coach Melton gets the first win uh, of his head coaching career for the Admirals, and I think pretty convincingly. Uh, we'll need a big game out of our man Bryce Sparks, but we'll get it. Agreed. Franklin with win number one on the year. Independence at East Nashville. Again, this is looking like a tough matchup. East Nashville, obviously one of the better teams in their classification. The schedules they've played, not close. Because of that and because I think Independence is just better, Indy wins that game. I agree with you. Uh, I love Coach Jamal Stewart at East Nashville. I think what he's doing is a great job. This is a... Boat race. Oh. That surprised me a little bit you said that. I'm glad, though. Boat race. Tate, you're up. Here's one where maybe it could be a little different. Nolensville at 1-4, traveling to Rockvale 
three and one. What say you, Mr. Matthews? Uh, this is a good game. Rockville, you know, they got brought down to earth a little bit. They were three and zero, but the wins were against Lavergne, Siegel, and <laughs> Lincoln County. Um, they got Riverdale last week, thirty-three zero. Don't let that fool you too much. I think Riverdale might have the best defense around. Seriously, good. I'm not saying they're going to beat Oakland. I'm saying I think they got the best defense around. Uh, Nolensville's better in their one and four record. I think Rockville gets the win. I'm going no low. I think it's going to be really close. I do too. But I'm going no low. So you're you're thinking maybe home field and the confidence of winning three games is the difference. You know, normally, you know, I, I would think Coach Derek and them out coach. Uh, they won't get out coached, but R- Rick Rice and his staff, they're, they're not. Good, they're good coaches. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I, I hope I'm wrong. Here's another one where we could differ. Page versus Giles County. A couple of unbeaten teams. Uh, Page with a 36-10 win last year. Obviously, these teams are different. I'm going Page. I am too. And normally, you know, they'll be – Giles County, Coach O'Connor's good too. Uh, but I just think this Page, is, this Page team's got something. They're healthy. And when they're healthy, I think they can play with anybody. So, uh, it's not a blowout by any means. But I'm with, I'm with Coach Rathbone, 6-0. I'm riding with Bone, baby. So right now we just got one difference. Yes. No one's Rockville. Ravenwood at Hendersonville and Summit versus Beach. Now a couple things there. It's Wilco versus Sumner, and it's don't look ahead if you're Ravenwood and Summit. Those are two tough opponents. Ravenwood at Hendersonville playing that offense. It's a little tricky to play against. You're not really preparing for that kind of team throughout the year. Might help them for the game the following week, though. No doubt about it. Who uh, you got in that game, Tate? Ravenwood at – actually, uh, yeah, it's your turn. Ravenwood at Hendersonville. Okay, Hendersonville's good, real good. Um, yes, they run the wing tee, but it's a different wing tee than Summit. But here's what they got. They got two running backs in Torrin Baker and Ellis Ellis, Ellis squared, Ellis Ellis from Ellis Middle School. No, I was going to say, <laughs> yes. Uh, and they are – hey, Coach, Coach Hester don't need me to tell the guys this. Those are two guys that if you let them get out in space, they're going to the house. They can both do it. So uh, if they look ahead, they will get beat. I don't think they look ahead. I think Ravenwood's better, but this is a good football game. I go with the, I go with the Raptors, G2 bar. I'm also going Ravenwood in our final game of the week. There will be tons of orange and navy blue for this one. Summit versus Beach. Great quarterfinal matchup from last year. Summit wins that one 36-29. Beach. Lost some people from that team. Summit, not many. Uh, and because of that, I think it's going to be a good game. Don't count Coach Crabtree out. Never. But I think Summit wins double digits. Summit is playing at a high, high level. Both these games that you mentioned. If they overlook them, they'll get beat. They won't overlook them. they got senior leadership. Uh, Summit's just too good. They'll beat them. And, man, is it going to be a big one in two weeks. But uh, Patrick Hill – you know what Coach Crabtree is going to do. They're going to give it to him about 40 times in the game. <laughs> best, best defense against Destin Wade is to try to keep him off the field. But I think Summit's defense is too good. Summit wins. Come on, Nolo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, that's one you don't mind losing. but I would love to. I've got to get back in this thing. Coach Derek, if you need me to come over this week, let me know. I couldn't really offer much, but I could maybe – Give you a pep talk. I think I got my first win in a game day at Brentwood in a long time picking. Jeez. I thought Dr. Qualls was going to pick Raymond, but he didn't have the guts. The bear head, man. Was that, did you see DJ Pryor's face when he put that bear head on? <laughs> it was great. Tate, thanks for being here as always. Looking forward to the games this week. Get out and, get in, get out and see one. We got a lot of good ones. Thank you for joining us for Sports Connection. We'll see you next time.